Hey guys, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Okay, we're going to continue on with our Unity series and we're going to do a brief introduction into creating uh, a, uh, a very simple enemy that will run towards your player whenever you get to within a certain distance. So let's get started here. I'm going to show you really, uh, really quick what we're going to uh, have done by the end of today's lesson. So uh, let's click play. So here's the corridor that I have uh, created. Hopefully you've got something similar. I just capped it off with some simple end pieces. Uh, we have some pickups here. And as we round the corner, you're going to see we have this ominous black capsule. Uh, it's not marked as static, so it's not done. No lights hitting it. That is kind of chasing our player. Uh, and you can see it comes around corners, and it'll continue pursuing the player uh, to get out of a certain range. So as you can see, it stopped there. But if I go back closer to it again, it'll continue on its pursuit. Uh, so much so that it'll actually start pushing you and uh, you can add like a, a death and kill strip later into the uh, into the game. Okay, excellent. So let's see how we went about doing that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do actually is we're going to create uh, a nav mesh agent. And what that's going to do, it's going to, uh, Unity is going to look at your level and determine uh, what are walkable paths for your AI. So what we can do is we gotta to go to the navigation window. But first, actually, I'm gonna get rid of my old uh, old navigation here. Let's see, whereabouts do they stick it? Scene, scene one, there it is. There's my nav mesh agent. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of my enemy here. And uh, so we're kind of starting from fresh here. So uh, I'm gonna create a walkable path here for my enemy AI. So up here I have a navigation panel. Now if you don't see your navigation panel, you just need to add it. You're just gonna go to window up here, you're gonna go to AI, and then you can add the navigation panel. And you can then dock it with whatever, uh, in whatever section you would like. Excellent. So uh, in the navigation panel, we have a couple different options here that you can kind of uh, change around uh, how, uh, what's walkable, what's not. But I'm gonna go to the bake section and uh, you need to make sure of course that uh, everything is marked as static that you want to uh, walk around in, very similar to when we baked in the lightings. Uh, I mean, you can tell it uh, what objects it's looking for. I'm going to look for everything, but you can tell it just to bake uh, mesh renderers or terrains, but we're just going to go to all right now and go back to the bake, and I'm just going to bake this scene. And then what you're going to see here is we now have a walkable path for our enemies. But you're gonna notice there's a few areas that it's not gonna be able to walk around here. Uh, and that's because we've got our pickups here that are blocking the enemy's path. So if you wanted to, uh, you could change the radius of your agent. So if I put it down to 0.2, for example, and rebake it. As you can see now, it's going to walk around the crate a little bit better. But you wanna make sure it doesn't get stuck on corners. Uh, so I'm gonna put that at 0.3, have a look there. And now we have enough room for the agent to walk through on both sides as well. It's less likely to get stuck on the corners. Excellent. So now we've created a nav mesh that our uh, enemy will be able to, uh, that our mob will be able to walk around our level at. Good. Excellent. Now let's make our enemy. So over here in the hierarchy, I'm just going to right click and just make a very simple uh, capsule. Uh, of course, I recommend you, um, you actually uh, 3D model and design your own in Blender, ideally. I'm going to reset its position and let's just move this enemy just kind of around the corner here. Excellent. Where are we sitting here? Looks good. So it's lying in wait for our player to come around the corner. Perfect. Okay, so there's our enemy. And the next thing we're going to do now is we need to add a uh, component onto our enemy so it reads this nav mesh that we've created. Okay, so with the enemy selected, we're going to go over to the inspector here and we're going to add a nav mesh. You can just type nav and you see the nav mesh agent and it'll add it there. Um, and um, let's just call this mob because this is our mob here. And what you can see is the nav mesh agent. Um, you can change the agent type. Uh, we're gonna keep it a humanoid now for of course, but this is really handy, the speed. You can set how fast you want the agent to run, how quick it accelerates, turns, all these type of things. So that is a really handy feature to kind of play around with later, which we'll probably get into. Okay, excellent. So we've created our uh, navigation uh, path for our AI, and we've added our mob here, the ability to uh, move around with this navigated uh, mesh. So now we're gonna write a very simple script so that the uh, enemy, that the mob, will approach the player as it gets near. So in my script folder, I've just created a new script called enemy. Uh, you can call it uh, mob or, 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 or AI follow, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and uh, so let's open up 
uh, open up the script here now in Visual Studio. And uh, I've already got it typed up. I'm not gonna go through the typing process here. I'll leave it on the screen. Um, but let's kind of talk about what we're seeing here. So uh, one line we had to add up here at the top is we had to tell it to use the Unity Engine AI features, and that's gonna allow it to read the nav mesh. So the first thing we're gonna add here is the Unity Engine AI. And I should note that I've actually placed the script in the tech drive and the assets folder. Um, so you're welcome to open up that PDF and type out the script as always. I just wanna repeat, I recommend you type out the script, not just do a copy and paste, it will help immensely. Okay, so we've, uh, we've added the Unity Engine AI uh, feature up here at the top, and now let's talk about these first little uh, First little three things we're going to add here at the beginning. We're adding one private, and what that's going to do, uh, it's going to establish the nav mesh agent and define mob here. And you can see that we're referring back to the mob or enemy, you can call this whatever you like, uh, throughout our script. And then we're going to create two publics. Uh, we're going to create a public game object that's going to be called player. As you can see, it's going to call the player down later in. Now, this is public, so we're going to be able to establish in our inspector, uh, identify in our inspector what the player is. And then we've created a second public uh, that's called, I've just called it mob distance run here. See it refers to down here. And I've just set a, uh, a distance in there. Um, but uh, you'll be able to change that later in the inspector because it is a public float. Okay. So now let's go on to our void start, and what we're going to do is very similar as to when we did our uh, scripting lesson on our 2D character controller uh, back in the first term. Um, we are going to have our mob, which remember we identified here at the beginning, get the component nav mesh agent that is attached to this object in the inspector there. So we're telling the mob to grab the component nav mesh agent. Okay, excellent. Now let's move down into the update. Uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to create a float, which is a number, uh, and we're going to have that float identified as distance. So we're defining what distance is, right? Uh, and what distance is going to be is uh, the, uh, 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 the transform position of the object and then the transform position of the player. And that's kind of the distance that's going to be looking for, the distance... <clears throat> of what could be the the object, the enemy, the mob, as well as the distance of the player, okay? So that's what distance is referring to here. And then we're gonna create an if statement. And what we're gonna say is if the distance, remember we've defined distance up here, if the distance is less than the mob distance run. And remember we're establishing what mob distance run up here is uh, as a public float. So this is something you'll be able to identify, uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, put in as a value in the inspector. So if the distance is less than the mob distance run, we want this to happen, right? Um, so what we're wanting to do is we're going to transform the position of, uh, of, our, of our game object here towards the player, okay? And remember, we established the player up here as a public variable, okay? So if the distance is less than less than the mob distance run, which we establish up here, we're going to change the new position towards the player. Okay, and that's what's kind of happening here in the script. So we'll close this down. And then we're going to take our enemy script here and we're going to drag it oh, once it updates, sorry, and we're going to drag it onto our capsule. Okay, and then you're going to see our script here. Probably just collapse that down, make it a little easier to read. Uh, you'll see our script here. Uh, it doesn't know what the player is yet. And here's our mob distance run. So first let's identify the player. Uh, you can either just, uh, you know, click a little dot here and, uh, and search for the player. Uh, FPS controller right here. Or you can take the player from the hierarchy and drag it down there as well. Okay, uh, and uh, let's go test that out and see if it works now. So there's my pickup. I can grab that. I'm around the corner. And here comes the enemy, chasing us until we get without distance. There we go closer, starts chasing us again. But we can get away pretty easily from this agent. So what we can do now is we can tweak a few of these values. Let's switch the mob distance run to 10. And what that'll do is now it'll start chasing us from a further away distance, distance of 10 actually. Uh, so it'll, be, it'll start chasing us sooner and we'll have to get a little bit further away before it uh, will break the engagement. See it down there, move towards a little bit. I actually kind of like this 10, that looks pretty good, but it's still moving pretty slow. So let's amp up the speed here, ramp up the speed. So I'm gonna go to the nav mess agent here and I'm gonna put the speed up to 10 as well. 
Okay, and let's try that now. Let's see how much quicker this mob will be running. Oh, there we go. Oh, that is much faster. It is just, okay, yeah. So it is actually quite difficult to get away from it now, uh, and it will follow you pretty much to the end. In this case, it'll actually push me, clip me right out of my level. Exciting. Okay, so there's a lot of potential you can have there with that script. I uh, hope you found this uh, uh, helpful, and we will uh, see you all later. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.